This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Sunday was an ice cream treat that was created early in the 1900s here in the United States. Well, what I did is I took all the elements of that Sunday and put it into an ice cream. So if you like vanilla ice cream, chocolate, and peanuts, you won't be disappointed. So we start by making a custard base and for this ice cream I use 2% milk and I get two cups of it and I put it into a medium saucepan and then I take that over to the stove I put it on medium heat and I want to bring that to a boil and that takes about 10 to 13 minutes. Now while the milk is heating up we need to separate out five egg yolks and so the way I do that is I separate the egg over a small bowl like this just transferring the yolk back and forth in the shell then I put the yolk in one bowl and transfer the white to another that way in case I get some shell or a yolk happens to break then I haven't um, ruined the egg yolks or the egg whites in the other bowl and so then I'm just gonna take those five egg yolks and I'm gonna pop them in my mixer and I'm gonna go ahead with my whisk attachment and start beating those up and then I'm gonna add a half a cup of sugar plus two tablespoons and then once I get all of that sugar in I'm just gonna let this whip up for about two minutes now as we look back at our milk you can see it's developed a nice skin on the top and we see some movement under it this is what we're looking for so once that starts happening we take that hot milk and we start adding it to our egg yolks but very slowly just about a tablespoon or so at a time the reason we're doing this it's called tempering the eggs and the reason we do that is if we were to pour um, all the hot milk in at once it would start to cook the eggs and that's not what we're going for here now once you've got all the milk in the mixer take that pan and put it right back on the stove and then we're gonna pour that hot milk and egg mixture right into the same pan now it's also important that we get the the heat on low because what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be slowly uh, getting these eggs cooked through so you're going to need to get your heat resistant spatula and an instant read thermometer because we want to bring this mixture up to 170 degrees now this is going to take a few minutes to do so you're going to need to keep stirring and stay with it but within a oh, five minutes for sure uh, your temperature will get up to 170 and then we're ready to um, move on now when it hits 170 we turn the heat off and I've made this little contraption with a strainer in um, side of a large measuring cup and we're just gonna strain that um, hot milk and egg mixture and the reason we do that is even though we've cooked it slowly there are some solids that have started to cook and we want to strain those out now we need to let this uh, cool down to lukewarm which it takes about a half an hour and then we can go ahead and put some plastic on this and then put it in the refrigerator this mixture needs to chill for about two to three hours now the next thing we're going to make are some chocolate covered peanuts so we're going to take three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips in a medium sized bowl and I'm going to uh, melt this in the microwave and when I melt chocolate I do it in 30 second bursts and you'll see that after the first 30 seconds this really is started to melt but it's not nearly smooth enough so I'm going to put it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds and this time you'll see it's much smoother smoother so we want to go ahead and microwave this chocolate till it's totally smooth then bring it out and give it a nice stir so that there are no lumps of chocolate anywhere 
Then we're going to get a cup of salted peanuts. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and put that right into our bowl with the chocolate. Now it's really important that we mix this really, really well. We want basically all the peanuts to be covered in chocolate. Then I'm going to get one of my baking pans and I'm going to put a piece of parchment on it. And then I'm going to take my chocolate and peanut mixture and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spoon that out all onto the piece of parchment. And then we're going to take our spatula or knife and we're going to spread this out. Now we want to get this out as thinly as we can. Um, so you just kind of move the peanuts around until you get almost a single layer on your parchment. And then we're going to take the baking sheet and we're going to put it in the refrigerator until it's totally cool. So now we're going to make our fudge swirl. So in a medium saucepan we're going to get a half a cup of sugar and a third of a cup of light corn syrup and it's the corn syrup that gives the viscosity uh, that we want um, in this swirl and then to that we're going to add a half a cup of water and then what's going to give this the chocolate flavor we're looking for is cocoa powder and we need six tablespoons of dutch processed cocoa powder now we're going to take this mixture with our whisk and we're just going to try to mix it together but you're going to find the cocoa powder just does not want to cooperate. So just do the best you can with it at this point. Then we're going to pop it um, onto the stove on a medium heat. Now at the beginning you're going to want to um, be using your whisk and you're going to want to whisk it constantly because as you can see we're breaking up um, any little clumps of cocoa and there is a lot of sugar in this mixture and it could burn easily. Now once you get the cocoa nice and smooth switch over to a heat resistant spatula and what we're going to do is we're going to bring this mixture to a boil. So once you see it bubbling like this put your timer on for just one minute keep stirring with your spatula and what you're going to find is it's going to start to thicken up a little bit after a minute just pull it off the heat and uh, set it to the side and we're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla at this point we didn't add that earlier because it would have just we would have lost all the flavor once we brought it to a boil and then we're just going to let this sit and cool now once this gets to room temperature, you're going to want to go ahead and put it into another container and then pop it into the refrigerator. It's really important that this um, fudge swirl sauce be totally cold when we go to add it to our ice cream. So after a couple of hours, our ice cream base is totally cold and we've got a couple of other things we need to add to this. We're going to get some heavy cream and we're just going to add a quarter of a cup, which isn't very much, but it does give it a nice richness. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla and then go ahead and get your spatula. Just kind of mix this up together and then we're ready to go ahead and start freezing this in our machine. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get my chilled um, bowl out of the freezer. I'm going to put the dasher on and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the top on and get this running. And now you can see why I like using this large measuring cup when I make ice cream because I have to pour it right down the center. And this is going to freeze for about 15 or 20 minutes. Now while the ice cream is freezing, we can get our chocolate covered peanuts ready. And you can see these have chilled up nicely. They're one giant peanut cluster. But what we are going to want to do is break these up into some small pieces. Now you may be tempted to have to try one and if you you do you won't be disappointed these are like the best peanut cluster candy um, on the planet so do indulge yourself and have a little piece but make sure that you have enough of the ice cream and break them up into small pieces like this now it's been about 20 minutes on my ice cream maker and the ice cream is getting nice and thick so I'm going to go ahead and start dropping um, all these chocolate covered peanuts and basically it doesn't have to churn for very long uh, just about the time I get them all in and I see that they're mixing around then I go ahead and stop the machine. 
Now at this point, we're going to put um, the uh, fudge swirl in with the ice cream, but here's how I like to do it. If we were to mix it in the dasher, it would just get all muddy looking and kind of disperse everywhere. So what I do is I incorporate it as we're going to harden off the ice cream. So I get my container that I'm going to put in the freezer. I put a drizzle of sauce, of the um, fudge swirl sauce down in the bottom. And then I go ahead and I get a few uh, spoonfuls of the ice cream. And then I go ahead and put that in. Then I go ahead and add another few little spoonfuls of the fudge swirl and I just kind of keep layering it like this until I've used up all the ice cream and as much of the fudge swirl sauce as I want to use. And once you get um, your container filled up and you've used up all of your ice cream, make sure you put a lid on top and we want to put this in the freezer for at least an hour or so to harden off. That way we'll be able to scoop it. So here is our tin roof ice cream. It's been in the freezer for about an hour or so. It's gotten nice and hard so I can scoop it. And it just is this wonderful combination of the vanilla ice cream with that great fudge swirl and those amazing chocolate covered peanuts. Well, if you'd like to give this tin roof ice cream a try, just go to our website and uh, visit the Sundays with Cindy show notes, and I'll have the recipe there for you. Don't forget to sign up for our monthly newsletter. And of course, if you have any questions, please make sure and send me an email. I'll see you next time.